I want to just first get a sense from you about how popular energy investments have been among direct lenders over the past few years. Yeah, hi, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Uh, I would say, pretty bluntly, not very popular. Um, the sentiment towards oil and gas investing from uh, our investor universe, which are the, the institutional investors in the world, is pretty bleak. It's been bleak for several years, and I would say when the stats come out regarding 2019, they're going to look pretty bad. All right. Well, we just uh, was, were hearing uh, from Allison McNeely about how uh, Blackstone, for one, is doubling down on some oil and gas investments. I'm wondering whether you're hearing similar things from your institutional clients invested in the private markets saying, you know what, it seems more plausible, given the disruptions in the Middle East, that these companies have a chance. Well, I would agree with that. I would say I didn't mean to be so negative before. I mean, there are signs for optimism. We're seeing some smart investors uh, start to sniff around, if you will, the space. We host a breakfast every year with a number of LPs, and we're talking big state pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, university endowments, uh, where we went around the table this year and asked, um, how many of you, raise your hands, are going to be putting money to work in oil and gas this year? I would say about 80% raised their hands. That same survey a year ago, December of 18, maybe it was 20%. So there are signs for optimism. Um, it's encouraging when you see people like Blackstone recommitting to the space. Um, there's been some recent M&A activity that causes people to, to be more optimistic. So I'm generally one who feels like when sentiment can't get any worse, it's typically when things start to get better. So I'm, I'm hoping that we see uh, more interest this year. All right. And I'm wondering on the flip side about renewable energy types of sources and companies, whether you have seen more uh, investing and interest on that, in, that, in that space. Without a doubt, we have. I get asked the question a lot, Jeff, do you think that the decrease in energy fundraising, oil and gas fundraising, I should say, is tied to this increased appetite for renewables? I would say there definitely is some of that. So without a doubt, there is a structural uh, change going on um, where more and more investors are allocating more money to renewables, allocating less, and in some cases, shutting down commitments to oil and gas completely. Um, that being said, I think the predominant driving factor is more just um, fatigue on the on the behalf of energy investors in, in oil and gas. When you talk about renewables, I'm wondering what specifically you're talking about when you t when, with, the, with with respect to private investments. Um, so, for instance, we raised a, a wind development fund um, last year, and in our CRM system, we typically put a number of expected dollars from these different investors that could potentially invest in a fund. Uh, for instance, in a couple of cases, we had 25 or 50 million dollars for some of these LPs. In this fund's case, those commitment levels were tripled and quadrupled. So a lot of that tells you that the allocations are moving that way. Where we've seen the more the most interest, to answer your question more directly, wind, solar, um, some renew other renewable sources of power, um, the services that those um, uh, producers of power require. So there's definitely increased appetite in that space. Just turning quickly to IPOs, I'm wondering whether you've seen any fallout in private markets tied to the very public uh, weak performance of last year's IPOs. Without a doubt. Uh, well, I should say we've yet to see the, uh, the impacts of that. I would say that there is more hesitancy. So the immediate reaction from our investor base is, Wow, we got to we got to look at this more closely. Are these valuations that we're getting on paper from our managers do they really hold up? Um, because the exit market for some of these companies, especially the bigger ones, is the IPO market. And if those IPOs are underperforming, maybe the valuations on our venture and growth equity portfolio are higher than they really should be. That causes some consternation, and I'm sure a lot of these investors are looking at their books and maybe even discounting the valuations that they're getting from some of these managers.